Hi and welcome back to ISA for Online in Glasgow. I'm here with Sarah Mercer, the Professor of English Language Teaching at University of Graz in Austria and uh, today's plenary speaker. Hi Sarah, how Hi. did it go today? It was interesting, I hope it, I hope it went well. I enjoyed myself, so I hope the audience did too and that they got something to take away from it. It's kind of cheating because we had a lot of our students there, so there was a very nice atmosphere, um, but hopefully it went well, hopefully people find it useful. So you bought, uh, there were 36 students from? Yeah, I think 36 students from my home university. So um, it was organized by two colleagues of mine. One colleague in particular had a lot of hard work and effort. So Ulla Furstenberg did all the organization of the trip. Uh, and we were able to bring over a, a nice group of students. They're all training to become teachers. And this is their first ever IATEFL. So I'm hoping that they're enjoying it. And they were a great moral boost to me today, so they were, they were giving me a lot of moral support today. I think uh, the audience, from what I saw, also enjoyed the session because of, of so. the theme. That it's very relevant, it's very topical, so, this yeah. idea of psychology of teachers in the classroom. Can you tell us a bit about it? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the talk I decided to sort of split into sort of three segments. So I wanted to talk about the importance of relationships. So the first part was really looking at how learners and teachers are connected through relationships and how important that is for everything that we do in the classroom and outside the classroom too for that matter. Then I wanted to look a little bit at the positivity and growth and how important that is for learners as a kind of basis for the atmosphere in the classroom, for the relationships, for developing the kinds of connections that we make. And then the final part is where my research has gone more recently which is looking at teachers and their mm. psychology. So, it's not to say that there hasn't been work on teacher psychology. There's a great body of excellent research on identity and cognition and some on, on teacher motivation. But compared with the amount of work that's been done on learner psychology, there's, there's not nearly the same depth and breadth and complexity of research on teacher psychology. And, and I think there are good reasons for that. I mean, I, the aims of the profession, fundamentally, it's about learners. So it's obvious sure. that we focus on learners. Um, I think the learner-centered movement also rightly drew attention to the learner and their needs um, and for, for researchers there's very pragmatic practical reasons why it's difficult to access teachers. Teachers are very very busy people um, and they often don't have time to take part in research projects. I think there are reasons why but I have a, a, a very strong conviction that we now need to spend a lot more time talking about teacher psychology, teacher professional well-being and um, how important it is to look at how teachers feel in their workplace and their professional roles um, because not only because they're worth it in their own right, but because because of that relationship to the learners, because of that connection, their psychologies are intimately connected with how well they can teach and the psychologies of their learners. So I think it's time we, we talked a little bit more about teachers and teacher needs and teacher well-being. But definitely, and you also got a lot of positive response from teachers on Thank our social you. media who Thank asked uh, who we, and I have a few questions okay. to ask you about but just let me tell you about Agri Nusa from Indonesia okay she was watching with 27 of her classmates oh, her and her lecturer and she said that lovely. they're that the she was really really happy with the fabulous conference and she just has a question to ask yeah. and she said that she's often finds it quite difficult to get close to her teachers and she wants to know what tips that you have for overcoming her fear of of building a relationship with, her te with other teachers. So these are teachers building yeah. relationships with each other within the classroom yeah. without um, overstepping personal boundaries. Um, I mean, this is one of the things I said at the beginning of the talk. It's very difficult for me to comment on what's appropriate in an individual setting. So everybody has to act in a way that is authentic for them, mm. that feels right for them and their style and their personality. Um, different institutions have their own cultures. So sure. what works in one institution might not work in another and is not appropriate. Um, and the same goes for, for social cultures. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of ifs that I would say is that it's very hard for me to tell somebody what they should do. But a lot of the same advice is um, being empathetic, um, starting these little micro conversations with each other, sharing teaching ideas, um, not seeing ourselves always as in competition with each other, um, but, and, and not always being afraid of criticism. But if we, if we, if we open ourselves up to our colleagues and say, mm -hmm. we want to share, we want to learn from each other, and we want to work together, open ideas, and have more dialogue, and relationships are not easy. Of course, um, yeah. You know, relationships <laughs> take time and they take effort, and, uh, and, and we get it wrong sometimes. We make those withdrawals from the relationship account that we've built. Um, because we're only human, we don't always get it right, but we, you know, you try again the next day to do it better. So Definitely. I think it's, um, you know, maybe it's a little bit of the self-compassion is that we work at relationships and we have to work hard at them um, and, and be open to these 
small steps sometimes to build up a relationship. It doesn't have to be, you know, straight into to, to a very, it can be little steps that we can take. Yeah, definitely. It's a, and I also have another question from Svetlana Kandibovic in, from Montenegro. She would ask if you could give uh, a couple of tips on how to promote the growth mindset mm -hmm. amongst teachers, because you talked about two different mindsets. Yeah. So if you have some practical tips for how to enhance that, that would be great. Yeah, mindsets. I mean, there's a lot of things we can do. I mean, starting talking about mindsets explicitly. So really actually get, get learners to, and, and teachers to talk about their mindsets, because one of the things that I said at the beginning is these are very implicit, so they're very deeply rooted, mm. so we're not often aware of it. So sometimes the first step is to start becoming aware that we have these mindsets, what these mindsets are, and discuss them very explicitly and what the impact of that could be and in what areas. So, in fact, getting people to, you know, sort discussion cards with statements on and do they agree or disagree and, and why might that be um, is a great starting point. And then thinking about how we talk to ourselves about things. If things go wrong, what do we blame it on? Mm. Is it something that's within our control, something we can make a difference on, something that we can influence? Or are we talking about this as if it's something fixed that's, that's not within our control, something we can't change? So maybe that sort of explicit awareness raising is a first step. Thinking about the language that we use, mm -hmm. looking at role models. Um, one of the things that I know a colleague in Graz did was she had students go on a kind of scavenger hunt in literature and TV programs, looking for examples of people with growth mindset. So every time they came across something, they made a note of it. They get like a little portfolio of, active, of, of examples of people who were exhibiting growth mindset in literature, in films, in, in adverts, all those kinds of things. And that was a very nice thing that she did. It's, great. it's very interesting. Yeah. Um, the other thing I have to ask you about is, is you're also co-coordinator of the research SIG yes. here, which is also yes. Yes. fascinating. And can you tell me a bit more about your research? My research or yes. the research SIG? Yeah, the research SIG and your own okay, personal research. So the, so the research SIG um, is, um, is a, one of the special interest groups within IOTEFL that focuses on supporting research of all kinds. So we're, we've, as, a, as an organization, as a, as, a, as a group within IOTEFL, we believe very strongly in democratizing research. We believe very strongly that research is not something for an elite few. It's, not some, it's something that everybody can do. And there are different ways of understanding research. And we're very keen to take away people's fear of research. Research is nothing more than asking questions and seeking to find evidence to answer those questions. And anybody can do it. People may need more support, less support. It depends what they're doing. But there are different types and conceptualizations of research. Um, and so. Um, one of the things that we have been very supportive of in the city is pe teachers engaging in research, practitioner research. Um, and that's of all different kinds. There's not just one way to do research, there's a million ways to do it. Um, and we've, had a, we've got some fantastic members of the committee who've been very good in promoting mm -hmm. um, conferences. We've got a lot that we support where teachers can present their work, talk about what they've done, studies that they've done um, within part of their practice. Um, things and ideas they've got for examining their own practice. So we've done a lot in that area. Um, and we also basically also provide a discourse community for people who are researching all different areas of ELT. So we work a lot with other SIGs because we're interested in talking about how we research various aspects of language teaching and learning um, and discussing the methodologies and the approaches to that and how we, how we share that with other people. And yourself as well, you're also involved in a lot of fascinating research. I know also with Erasmus. Yeah, we do, at the moment, the, the project we're doing at the moment is funded by the Austrian National Bank. Okay. Um, and we're looking at the professional well-being of CLIL teachers. Okay. So we've yeah, just wow. started this project now. Um, and um, we're looking at the fact that in Austria, CLIL has been very popular. And some teachers flourish in the role. They love it, they enjoy what they do, they love the challenge, they like the sort of um, different relationship it creates between teachers and learners. And some really struggle with being a CLIL teacher. And there's a lot of, from these particular teachers, there's a lot of negativity. They find it hard to identify. And, and in some cases, it's a threat to their professional well-being. So it's not so straightforward. So one of the things that we wanted to do was investigate what it is that can support teachers so that they flourish in their role as CLIL teachers. What are some of the challenges they face? And what are some of the joys they get from teaching CLIL? So trying to get um, a balanced understanding of what it means to be a CLIL teacher and what we can be doing um, to try to support CLIL teachers to ensure that everybody flourishes in that role. Thanks so much, Sarah. Thank you. Thank and you uh, thanks much. again for a wonderful plenary session. Thank you very much. A lot more responses coming in social media. Thanks. And um, they can also re watch your session live. That's very kind. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank bye you bye. very much. Thank you.